Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, and I'm a medical oncologist, uh, an associate clinical professor with a focus on thoracic oncology, working at the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center in the Los Angeles area. And I'm happy to be joined today by two of my colleagues who are also on the board of directors for GRACE, Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education. I serve as the founder and president, but I'd like to welcome two of my colleagues to introduce themselves, if you can. Maybe I can start with uh, you, Jared, if you can. Sure, I'm Jared Weiss. I'm also a thoracic oncologist at University of North Carolina. Ben? Hi, uh, Ben Levy. I'm a thoracic medical oncologist at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and primarily based out of Washington, DC. Great. Are you getting many questions about and are you thinking a lot about different variants and whether that is going to introduce, uh, you know, a higher level of, of uh, challenge? You know, we, we've seen the trends going down. How worried are you and or your patients about uh, this being a, a temporary valley going back up as more aggressive variants emerge uh, and become more prevalent. Uh, I, I'll patient. tell you, go ahead, Jared. No, you first, go ahead. I will tell you surprisingly as, as resourced as some of my patients are and as, as savvy as they are getting, this has not, at least in my region, been on their radar. More on their radar is when can I get, what can I do now that I'm vaccinated? I think people are exceptionally fatigued uh, they are seeing the numbers go down too, and I think this is happening across the country, but certainly in D.C. and Maryland, Virginia, we have seen a real drop in cases over the past, you know, since uh, mid-January. Um, so I'm not getting a lot, I'm surprised, I'm not getting a lot of those questions about variants and what that means, and I don't get the question about which vaccine protects against which variant. I have not seen that in my practice. I'd be curious to see what you guys have seen in yours, though. I'm getting asked, but not by patients. Patients and their families, my experience is identical to yours. I'm getting those questions from family, from friends, from people I interact with in other contexts. And I'm not getting that much, but you know, I, I think I think there's just like uh, the isolation fatigue. I think that there's a, a lot, there's so much uncertainty fatigue that at some point. You just accept, uh, I feel a certain amount of learned helplessness that we can agonize and agonize. It doesn't get anywhere other than you just have to. Uh, and I think that's interesting because one of the, the issues uh, for me as a control freak by nature, I think being an oncologist and having to accept that there's a lot in cancer that we can't control and just need to wait and see how somebody responds to a treatment, we can give the same treatment to two different people and one will have a brilliant, amazing, long lasting response and another person will have a much more humbling growth through that treatment. You just don't know. And I, I would say the reality is that uh, in, in COVID, I, I, I am more accepting that I cannot, you can't pour over this and and accurately predict what's going to happen. You just need to accept, we'll have to see, and we'll know more in a few months than we do now, and, and that's just gonna be the way it is. I do think there are two things we do know that give me some reassurance. I'll get, a, I'll get aside the pessimistic thing first. I do worry about these variants, um, and I do worry about um, new viruses. I think there are reasons why this um, pandemic happened that are, have not gone away in terms of climate change, human habits, um, social interactions and such. Leaving all that aside, there are two things that reassure me. Um, number one is that the vaccines that we have do seem to prevent quite well against death from any of the variants out there. Um, they're not protecting against illness as well for some compared to others, but against death, they still seem quite good. Number two is I was um, floored in a good way by how quickly Moderna developed a booster vaccine um, in case of need to the new variants. It took all of days, right? Because the nice thing about uh, uh, RNA vaccines as composed compared to proteins is there's no synthesis problem. In plainer English, you have a new viral variant, you sequence it, you can make a new RNA-based vaccine all of a day or two later. There's nothing to figure out. In, in contrast with the old protein vaccines that many of us have worked with for years, it's a protein synthesis problem. Once you know what you need to make, 
you need someone to figure out how you can make that. Can it be soluble? Can it be compared with your adjuvant? Right, the development can take a long time. And so from a uh, scientific perspective, from the emergence of a new variant to theoretical actionability in terms of somebody has a vaccine in a vial on a shelf is a matter of days. Now, the bigger barrier, of course, has been approval, and the FDA has signaled already that they will lower the barrier um, for entry um, uh, and authorization of a new vaccine that's addressing a variant in a similar way to a vaccine that already exists. And so put together in much plainer language, what this speaks to me as that, I agree, Jack, we don't know what's going to happen with these variants, but the fact that we can move quickly to action them, that we can move quickly from knowledge um, to a product that can do something about it, lets me sleep a little bit better at night. Well, um, I, let's just close on that. I want to thank both of you, Ben and Jared. I think that, uh, you know, we will probably have reason to revisit some of these issues as, as the pandemic and cancer care continue to evolve. And uh, I, I hope that we can continue to see some of the very favorable trends that have allowed us to get back to not necessarily normalcy, but at least something closer. And we will have to continue to revisit the long-term effects, both on the, the implications for cancer, the less, and less screening, and also how we practice a little differently as telemedicine gets integrated as at least a component appropriate for a subset of our patients. So great. Thank you both for taking the time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.